Hey guys, it's Brie here and I am in the greenhouse tonight to talk to you about how to grow a drought tolerant cut flower garden. So I've come up with a great collection of seeds for you guys to try. If you want to make your garden more drought tolerant this year, but you want to still get some good flowers for cutting and you want to attract great pollinators and beneficial insects all at the same time. So without any further ado, let's go through the list and some special notes for things you'll need to do to get these seeds started. Now I want to add that a lot of these seeds need to be started earlier. So many of the plants that we're starting here are actually native plants and native plants tend to be a little bit slower to germinate and a lot of them actually require something that we call cold stratification. Cold stratification just means that we're putting them in a cold, usually moist place for about a month or so in order to help stratify the seed that is to kind of break the seed casing open. This replicates what happens in nature. So in nature, what happens is those seeds ripen on the plant in the winter or the late fall. They fall from the plant onto the moist soil where they sit under snow melt or at least on kind of a semi-moist ground for a couple of months before temperatures warm in the spring, which triggers germination. So cold stratification is a really cool evolutionary thing that plants have created because it keeps those seeds from accidentally germinating in the fall when they would die over the winter. Cold stratification is a signal to the plants to wait, don't germinate yet, wait until the cold winter is over and then germinate. So we have to replicate that when we're seed starting with some of these seeds. So we're gonna show you how I do that. And actually there's a couple different ways. Oh, a little spider. I have a little spider friend in here. Bing. Let's start by, I just want to show you all these beautiful flowers. Here is the stunning collection of flowers that I have selected for our drought tolerant cutting garden. And the reason that we're going with drought tolerant, we are, we are converting a lot of our flower farm and our farm in general to more drought tolerant varieties because who knows with the future of water, uh, with drought issues, it's just really, I feel not responsible to be planting a lot of things that require a lot of water. So drought tolerant in my mind is the way to go. The other benefit of these is they are all North American native and none of them are invasive. So you don't have to worry about doing any damage to your ecosystem by planting these guys. All right, so let's go through. I'm gonna go through each one and I'm gonna tell you a couple of the notes you're gonna to need to know about germination. Now, in general, I mentioned that these native plants have a slower germination and general growth rate overall. And so you'll wanna be starting these early. So this is great if you're a gardener who always wants to be kind of jumping the gun with seed starting like I do. It comes to be January. All right, so many of these native seeds require a little bit of a longer germination time. So if you're someone who usually likes to be a little bit antsy and get seed starting with your tomatoes and peppers and heat loving things too early, natives are the way to go because they will let you start much earlier. Now, many of these seeds, as we mentioned, also require cold stratification. So in my mind, there's no harm in cold stratifying these for longer than they need but there is a harm in cold stratifying them for not long enough. So when in doubt, start early. So for me, it is the day after Christmas day, it's almost January. I'm gonna go ahead and start cold stratifying the ones that need cold stratifying. So let's go through each packet. All right, first we're gonna start with our echinaceas. I love echinaceas as a cut flower because they are very versatile so when they still have the petals on them you can use them as a flower and then when they drop the petals they make a really cool textural accent with just the center little yellow button looking thing in the fall they also make a really beautiful and architecturally interesting shape and they drop a lot of seeds that birds like finches really like and the more birds in our garden the better so these guys do need cold stratification echinaceas i would recommend at least 30 days of cold stratification and even up to 90 or you could keep them honestly in the freezer for a really long time. So we're gonna do at least 30 days of cold stratification and then we wanna start them about 12 weeks before our last frost. So 16 weeks before your last frost for the echinaceas. And I have a couple varieties here. One is the purple cone flower. This is the straight native variety, Echinacea purpurea. And this is a white varietal. Um, I like them both. I find the pollinators like them both. If you wanna go with the straight native version, go with the uh, Echinacea purple cone flower. The Echinacea white swan is a cultivar. So if that's something you're trying to avoid, just know that. All right, next up in our order of seed starting is going to be the penstemon. Penstemon often requires just as much, if not sometimes more, cold stratification than echinacea. So the reason for that is because penstemon has, with nature, developed this really cool system. 
Some of the seeds are designed to not germinate the first year. This helps build a little bit of a backup plan for the penstemon. So if a season happens where a penstemon doesn't bloom and it doesn't get seeds, half of the seeds from the year before are designed to germinate in two years instead of in just one year. So there's always a little bit of a backup um, seed bank for the penstemon in case something happens where there's a season they don't bloom. So it's really cool. Okay, so with that in mind, we need to start more penstemon than you think you need. So I always start two to three times the amount of penstemon that I really want to plant because not all of them germinate. That doesn't mean you have to start a lot of trays. Just start like three or four seeds per cell instead of just one because of the germination rate it tends to be lower. These also enjoy a cold stratification period. I would say 30 to 90 days on these. And actually I store these guys in the freezer for up to six years and they do really well. This penstemon is the Rocky Mountain Blue penstemon. Now you can also plant, the other one that I really enjoy is the Palmer's Penstemon, which is a pink varietal that has a nice sweet scent. That's the other one that I plant. I don't have the packet for it right now because I just saved the seeds from last year, so they're just in a Ziploc baggie, but I'm gonna start both. These are also slow germinators. So after that 30 to 90 day cold stratification period, they're still gonna germinate pretty slowly, so just keep that in mind. All right, the next one up that we're going to start is going to be our Coreopsis. So this one is deer resistant as well, which is really great. Um, the Coreopsis is very drought tolerant, but it is a slow germinator. So this one I start 12 weeks before last frost just because I know that the germination rate on it tends to be a little bit slower. Um, this one wants light when it's germinating, so make sure you don't cover it too much. All of these seeds I usually do a dusting of vermiculite over the top, but check the packet because sometimes they want light to germinate and sometimes they want dark. Most of these want light to germinate. All right, the next one up is going to be our milkweed. Milkweed is important to monarchs. You probably already know this, but if you didn't, milkweed is an important plant because it's a host plant for the larva of the monarch butterfly. So especially if you are in the path of migration for the monarchs, make sure you're planting a milkweed that's native to your area. Don't plant tropical milkweed. Tropical milkweed is not good for the monarchs if you're in North America. You don't wanna be planting that one. And you definitely wanna be starting milkweed from seed because the Xerxes Society has found that most of the milkweeds sold in nurseries, even the ones labeled pollinator safe, are actually contaminated with a really bad pesticide that will kill your monarchs if you plant it. Start this one from seed. Cold stratify, about 30 days, and then it's about 12 weeks to grow this one out. This one also wants light for germination, so again, just a little sprinkle of vermiculite over the top once we get it into our cell trays, but cold stratification will help. Next up, we have Black-Eyed Susan. If you've never grown Black-Eyed Susan, it's a really fun one, and this varietal in particular has a really nice long life, uh, bloom life on the plant, and that's really nice. Uh, it just adds a lot of architectural interest for a long period over the summer. This one blooms for me for four to six weeks, which is really great. It also has that kind of multi season interest so where we have the petals and then this cool little brown center once those petals fall off the brown center makes a really neat architectural detail for things like wreaths or dried arrangements so black-eyed Susan also a huge pollinator favorite and important food source for birds over the winter as well so this is another one that you'll want to leave some seed heads around for those birds to nibble on over the winter really pretty cut flower we're gonna start this one 10 to 12 weeks before last frost this one does not need cold stratification right you can just start this one 12 weeks before last frost totally fine now any of these if you feel like you're not sure when in doubt cold stratify it because it's not going to hurt these seeds are designed to be able to withstand freezing temperatures so when in doubt if you're like I don't want to look up all this information just go ahead and cold stratify it because it's not gonna hurt it okay next up let's talk about this one, Anis Hyssop, this one is also 10 weeks before last frost. So if you couldn't tell, we were, we're going in order from the ones you have to start first to the ones you have to start last. So here we have Anis Hyssop. Um, I love this plant. It's also a delicious plant. This one is kind of, the leaves are a little bit sweet and uh, it's really good in a simple syrup. It tastes anisey. So we like to make this one into simple syrups. I also like to make it into popsicles in the summer. Um, it's a delicious medicinal plant and it's a big, 
favorite of our bumblebees and our native bees. So this one is great, very drought tolerant as well, just like all the other ones are. No, uh, this one does need cold stratification, 30 days of cold stratification recommended, and then we're gonna start this one 10 weeks before last frost. Next up, we've got chocolate flower. If you've never grown chocolate flower, this one smells so amazing. The smell, it's like this chocolatey sweet, it's such a great smell, love chocolate flower. Um, this one does not need cold stratification. It does need 10 weeks to grow before first before last frost. Um, so you'll wanna start this one also a little bit on the earlier side, but it doesn't require cold stratification, so you don't have to start it quite as early as the other ones. If you wanna throw in some grasses with your cutting garden, um, Blue Grandma can be a really beautiful and easy to start grass to start from seed. You don't have to cold stratify it. I would start it at about six to eight weeks before your last frost just to get it a little bit of a jump. But you can also direct seed this. If you have a nice sterile seed bed, you can direct seed Blue Grandma and it will do well direct seeded. Um, it makes this, if you can, if you can see, it creates this little kind of eyelash at the top of the grass. So not only is it really valuable for uh, pollinators and for wildlife, the skipper butterflies in particular use this grass as a host plant. Um, it also makes a really neat kind of structural, architectural addition to a flower arrangement. So blue grandma grass is a bit of an extra credit. All right, so now we have all of our seeds. I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna pull out all the ones that need cold stratification and we're going to cold stratify those. So the way that I cold stratify, there's a couple ways. Sometimes I will make my soil blocks, which look like this. I will go ahead and put my seeds in here and then I will freeze this entire tray over the winter. If I can keep it somewhere where it's not going to be in the rain, um, getting you know really soaked on because these blocks will fall apart. If they're sitting in the rain, or snow melts into the tray, there's no drainage holes, because they're just sitting in water and then it becomes a mess. But if I can put them somewhere in the shade, a covered shade area, where they're gonna stay pretty cold, around freezing or you know under 40, 45 degrees, then I'll do that. I'll just put them right into the blocks if I have time, keep them in a cold place, and then once it's time to start growing them after their cold stratification period, I'll bring them into the warmer greenhouse. The other easier way to cold stratify is just to grab a roll of paper towels. You do need some Ziploc baggies. You could probably use, uh, if you want to stay away from the plastic, you could do um, fabric that's been coated in beeswax, like the beeswax wraps, and wrap them up in that. Totally works just fine. All right, so we have our paper towel. I've just moistened it. And now I'm gonna kinda just fan it out. There's a little hole in it, that's okay. <laughs> and then I'm gonna place my seeds into my paper towel. All right, so I've just laid my paper towel down. I have my Echinacea purple cone flower. All right, so we've opened up our packet. We're gonna sprinkle our seeds over our moistened paper towel here. And then we're going to fold our paper towel in half. so that the seeds are enclosed within the moist part of the paper towel. So part of the importance of stratification is moisture. It does need to be a moist environment. Dry stratification does not work as well. So if you really want this to work, take the time to put it into a moist paper towel. Don't just throw your entire seed packet into the freezer, that won't work as well. Okay, so I'm going to put the date on here. So we have 1226 is when we would put them in. They're gonna be out in 30 days, so 1-26. And so anytime after this. Now we don't have to take them out on the 26th if you don't want to, just that's the minimum. And then I'm gonna put on here Echinacea purpurea so that we know which seeds are in here. I'll slide my paper towel right in. Seal it up, get all the air out just so it sits nice and flat. And then we repeat with all of our seeds here that need cold stratification. I hope this helped provide you with a good guide for some good North American native drought tolerant cutting options. If you're not sure what to plant and you want to explore this a little bit more, check out nwf.org for some good native plants to your area.